people that I'm lying. What's up, y'all? Uh, as we go through, and I'll repeat this multiple times, but if you guys have questions on what I'm going through, just go ahead and throw that comment up, and I'll uh, and I'll talk about it as we go through. I'm gonna give it about another like 60 seconds or so before I jump on in, um, before I start talking about lower back pain. And then obviously, you know, if you gotta go, you can uh, you can see this later because I'll post it to my story. What's happening, everybody? Again, if you have any questions as we begin to talk about lower back pain, I'm going to cover some exercises. I'm going to cover why I think that happens and what you can start doing right away today for your lower back pain. Also, if you can hear me, I have a mic like plugged in. If you can't hear me, please like, please let me know. Um, but yeah, again, this will be saved. I'll post it on my story, so that way if you guys have any questions, it'll be up on my YouTube as well. So you can always refer back if you're like, damn, that was a really cool thing, but I got to go. Um, but yeah, we'll start momentarily. Um, so yeah, so me kind of get in a position where I'm not going to be blocked by the sun. Ugh. So let's talk a little bit about lower back pain. I'm going to move this thing. Let me get closer to the sun. Let me get closer to the house. All right, closer to the house. That way my connection is good. All right, so lower back pain. Let's talk about it. When people experience lower back pain, a lot of the times when I work with them, uh, it ends up being kind of like a multi-factor thing. And this is what I mean by that. We have problems being aware of what muscles we actually want to feel while we're contracting them. And in addition to that, we are not moving well enough outside of the gym. That would probably be one of the biggest problems that I see when it comes for lower back pain. We have people that are like, you should do this exercise in the gym. This is the way that you should be training. This is how you should be doing the technique of a deadlift. This is how you build strength and avoid lower back pain or resolve it but no one talks about what we're doing outside the gym. And the volume of time and the volume of reps that we get from things like stepping or standing vastly outnumbers anything that we're going to do in the gym. So the key thing is this. What I wanna to talk to you about today when it comes to resolving lower back pain and the body awareness drills that I'll take you for, through is this. Well, there's stuff that we can do inside the gym and there's stuff that we can do outside the gym. The people that I've worked with that have had the most success at resolving lower back pain always have done both. Whenever someone only does one, they only do the inside the gym stuff or they only do the outside the gym stuff, they are never as successful, okay? Again, if you guys have questions as I go through, comment below and I'll make sure I address those. Um, but yeah, so let's dive in. We're gonna talk about lower back pain first and kind of what it is and why I think it happens. Then we'll talk about the specific body awareness exercises that you can start doing for it. So first things up. I believe that a majority of people begin to get lower back pain because they're disconnected from how they're moving and then they're obviously straining the tissue in too much of a way that it's not prepared for and then that gets injury. This would be the same as I have never deadlifted a barbell before and then today I decided to do 500 deadlifts in a workout, right? That's too much volume for the lower back. It can also be I spent all day sitting in a chair, I spent all day driving, and then I went out on a run, and then I went out to do my deadlifting, and then I went out to go play pickleball or volleyball or hockey or whatever it is. The tissue was stiff all day, and then you immediately went into something. It doesn't matter how much you warm up, you're fighting a losing battle if your day is constantly going to be... I sat for a majority of the day or I stood for a majority of the day and then I did a 10 to 15 minute warm up and got into my workout. That's a losing battle as far as how we can combat and prevent lower back pain, either preventing it from happening or fixing it from happening. So again, for those of you that are just joining, the main point that I'm bringing up right now is it takes inside the gym stuff and outside the gym stuff to prevent this lower back pain. It is not one-sided. There's no perfect exercise to prevent you from getting lower back pain. And again, it's, I can have the best warm up, I can have the best technique, but if I spend a majority of my day sitting or standing, or next point that we're gonna go into, wearing poor footwear, I am just reinforcing poor mechanics for my lower back, I'm disconnecting from my body, and I'm making it extremely more likely that I'm gonna injure myself. So let's talk a little bit more about lower back pain in the sense of our shoes and our resting positions. So you guys know that I'm a big proponent of like wearing barefoot shoes, walking around barefoot, training barefoot when you can. The reason for that is simply this. It's not some magic pill where it's like, I got barefoot, my problems are solved, my back pain is gone. It's not going to be that way. It simply allows you to gain more awareness of what's happening because you're closer connected to the ground. 
your foot is gonna help you become aware of, am I shifting my weight forward or backwards? Is my arch collapsing or is it raised? Am I using my calf and my lower back to pull from the ground or am I actually using my glutes and hamstrings, right? Just because a movement looks good doesn't mean that you are actually feeling the right things while you do this. I'm sure all of us can, uh, can attest to maybe a time where we were running or we were deadlifting and when we did that, it ended up not actually feeling the right muscles as we went through. So what I wanna encourage you guys to do is think, hey, have I ever been in a situation where I've done an exercise and even though it looked good, something didn't feel right. I was squatting and it looked great. I was pushing my knees out, but I felt my knee. I was picking a weight off the ground and I had a really flat back, but I felt my back. Like, why is that happening? It's a disconnect from what you should actually be feeling while you do the exercise. And I believe that when someone gets barefoot, we begin to figure out these kind of differences in the brain where it's like, okay, I'm aware that my weight's a little bit too far forward in my toe. If I shift back and create a little bit more of a tripod with the ball of the big toe, the ball of the pinky toe, and the heel, well now all of a sudden, I feel my hamstring and my glute firing. What's going on with that? So we have this component of you have to get barefoot to have greater awareness of what's happening up the chain to the torso. And when we're talking about preventing lower back pain, a lot of proper firing in the back of the legs can make a huge difference. That transitions to our next point, which is how we stand and how we walk. Now, uh, I'm gonna back the camera up a little bit just so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Okay, I'll talk a little bit louder. So again, if you guys have any questions, please do comment below. So if I am wearing a shoe with an elevated heel, I'm going to be standing a little bit more like this or kind of slouched. And obviously if I'm sitting, that's not doing any help either. But if I'm standing like this, I'm just overloading my back here. And sure, I might tuck my hips when I go to do a deadlift or pull something up off the ground, but I'm spending hours and hours and hours accumulating this position where I'm lengthening my core, making it weaker. My hamstrings are lengthened because my hips are tilted forward. And because I'm likely spun out with my feet, right, my glutes, as far as my rotators go, are tight. And my hip extensors are kind of open. So it's gonna be really important that if you wanna to begin to feel the right muscles, such as the lower abdomen, the glutes, and the hamstrings and the obliques properly, it really can come down to using being barefoot as a body awareness benefit. So the first body awareness exercise is just simply getting barefoot, moving around, and doing some of your training, as long as you're not gonna drop anything on your feet, but doing it barefoot, and that's gonna make a huge difference for you guys, okay? So component number one, get barefoot, move around, and just simply ask yourself when you train, what do I actually feel while I'm moving. If you're picking something up off the ground, if you're squatting, if you're doing a bench press, anything where you're like, I feel my lower back on this exercise, ask yourself, do I feel my low abdomen? Do I feel my obliques? And do I feel my glutes and hamstrings actually being engaged while I'm doing the movement? An easy way to be aware of your obliques, if you guys are following along, please try this. Take two fingers, push them into your sides, and try and brace your core. If your fingers barely push out, you're drawing your abdomen in to brace. This is not what we want. We want to think about creating we want to think about creating a nice 360 soda can push out to brace. So again, take your two fingers, push in and think about driving out against the fingers in a 360. You can even do it this way, driving out to then make sure that you're bracing properly. There are other exercises you can do. I'll end up linking videos for that for you guys to be able to reference. But it's important that we've gotten barefoot. We're now aware of what's going on from the foot to the hip, which is gonna impact the lower back or any part of the spine that we might be experiencing pain in. And then we're learning how to control the parts of the core that help us resist rotation and then also help us rotate. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take you guys through a couple rotation-based exercises and I'll talk about them and show them and I'll try and make sure that you can do this as a follow-along if you're in an environment that allows this. But again, that key thing is gonna be we got barefoot, we did that, we're aware of our core, we're aware of our breathing, and we're asking ourselves constantly, what do I actually feel when I'm doing the exercise? What am I supposed to feel is another good question. And now let's talk about most of the time when people go, all right, you're having back pain, lower back pain, let's do a dead bug, let's do an exercise that resists rotation, like a pow-off press where the band's pulling this way and I'm resisting it, I'm not letting my core twist at all. This is a terrible way to long-term prevent lower back pain. It'll in the short term prevent the symptom of pain, but it won't resolve why it's occurring. So it's just gonna be, I get pain, I do these exercises, the pain goes away. I get pain again, I do these exercises, the pain goes away. We wanna break that chain. 
Life is in a rotation-based aspect. David Weck and Weck Method is one of my favorite things for this, where everyone I've worked with, we focus on controlling the rotation, and then that in turn makes them better at resisting rotation when they need. Again, comment questions below if you guys have any, and I'll provide clarity on anything specifically that you need. Also, please do, I hope you guys can hear this. I have a mic plug in, so I'm assuming you can hear me. If you can't hear me, please like, you know, type it in, let me know. Um, so the first thing is, going back to walking, when we walk, a lot of people overextended or slouched, and their head's just staying right in the middle of as they walk. That's not how we wanna go. We wanna be able to have the head stacked over the foot, I'm over-exaggerating, but the head stacked over the foot as we walk, and there's a little bit of swagger to it, but that's going to prevent my back from pushing me forward. If I rotate, if I have that head over foot, my foot's gonna be slightly pointed in, and I will be using the back of the leg to push me forward as I walk. If I don't stand foot slightly pointed in, at least that's how it feels, and I don't go head over foot, then my feet will spin out and my lower back will push me forward as I take every step, and these lower back muscles will be pulling me in my hip to push me forward. We don't want that, we want the back of the leg to do the work. So you've gotten barefoot, you're asking yourself what do you feel, the thing that you can do today, right now, as you're watching this, is think, look at your feet. How are they positioned? Even if you're sitting, are they spun out? Are the arches collapsed? Turn your toes in, raise the arch a little bit, not enough that your big toe comes off the ground though, and then just stand there with the feet slightly pointed in. Notice my kneecaps are pointed straight forward. So this is a straight knee position even though my feet might look really turned in. And then it's important, I feel really stacked. My core feels like it's on, my glutes and hamstrings feel like they're on. The moment I spin my feet out, I start to feel my lower back and I start to feel the inside of my knees. That's why it's gonna be so important that we're paying attention to that. And then as I go to take a step, it's that head over foot. It's that head over foot. This is how I lunge in class. This is how I teach people how to lunge. So for example, if we're in a group class and there's a bunch of lunges that day, I don't want someone holding the dumbbells and just lunging right in the middle. Again, it's gonna jack up the lower back and the knee. I want them to get that slight twist as they go through when that head is stacked over that foot as they go through and as they do the movement while they're exercising. So we had barefoot, we had what am I feeling, and now we're talking about my head is over my foot as I move my body. You can even try this, try a single leg balance. If I try and stand with my head not over the middle of my foot, I'm kind of losing my balance here. But if I coil, now my head's over my foot, I'm stacked, my arch is high, my foot's slightly pointed in, I feel pretty stable here, right? Like I can go through ranges of motion and I can stack to the other side if I want head over floating foot. And that's going to then prove how I run and how I walk. So head over foot. Again, I'm gonna give other videos that you guys can follow and reference later on to make sure that you have an idea of how you can use these actually tactically like in your day to day, okay? What I'm talking about now is also examples of outside of the gym stuff. The videos I give you of actual exercises and you can message me for those afterwards if you want. Um, and I have an app that you can access them in. Those are going to be the inside the gym. So right now is the outside the gym stuff. What am I wearing on my feet? How am I positioned as I move? Am I going head over foot as I walk? Walk with some swagger as you go around, y'all. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, um, one of the other things that we can go through is our resting positions, okay? So we covered all the other stuff I previously just said. Now resting positions is going to be something that is extremely important. Regardless of area of injury, when people that I'm working with implement different resting positions, they have a dramatically different experience with their movement. They immediately begin to get more supple, they're starting to become more aware of what range of motion they have control over, where the imbalances are at, and it's because that their rest mimics their movement. Think about it, if you're sitting in a chair right now, or you're standing, take a note of your position. If I'm standing, and I have feet spun out, overextended, is this a position I wanna squat in? No. Is this a position that I want to do a press in? No. Is this a movement that I want to maybe do uh, if yoga's our thing or jujitsu's our thing? Is this a position where I am in an athletic stance to perform well or to perform with pain free movement? No, it's not. So, this is not a good standing posture. If I'm sitting, same thing. I'm probably slouched with my head behind my pelvis. Or if I am forward, my head is jutted forward and I'm like this. This is not a super great position to squat in. I see a lot of people when they squat arch their neck and bow creating an upper back weakness but the point is that I'm in a position while I'm resting that is not good compared to how I want to move again what's gonna have a bigger impact six to eight hours of sitting and standing in a certain position to reinforce a type of posture or 
when you're in the gym for 60 to 90 minutes, right? That's an obvious, like outside of the gym is going to have such a massive impact on how you move. So the whole point of this is to say, again, we want our resting positions to reinforce good movement positions. So I'm going to take you guys through a couple of those. Again, uh, if you're in an office, this is going to be a little bit harder to do, but if you're at home or you're standing as far as the standing ones I suggest, try these while you're at home right now. The biggest suggestion that I give people is do this while you're watching TV. Do this while you're eating at home. When you're resting, try these positions as you go through. So the first thing that I like to do, I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit. Let me make these a little bit shorter. Woo! Stay tuned, y'all. All right, here we go. The first thing that I like to do is when I'm resting on the ground is just simply a squat. This should be a resting position for us. I should be able to rest here. I might not be able to rest long, but this is reinforcing how I want to rest. Okay, what's up, Keith? This is important. Okay, now instead of just sitting in a chair, rounded head forward, right, I can then go to a point my toes back, right? We all do this in yoga, where we sit back and we're on our shins. My, the point of this, right, again, reinforcing good movement in the gym, my knee is in the same flexed position that it is when it's in a squat. My hip is hinged in a position as far as my torso related to just above the knee. This is similar to a deadlift right here, this hip to torso position that I'm in, right? This position is similar to a deadlift. The lower leg to the foot is similar. Let me make sure you guys can see it. It's similar to a squat, and my spine is nice and tall. Notice my torso, this is a good pressing position potentially to be in. So how I'm resting, let's say I accumulate hours like this or in positions similar, well, I'm just reinforcing good movement. If this starts to get uncomfortable, what do I do? Well, I just simply bring one leg through. Now I have my head stacked over the foot, reinforcing that good twist. This is similar to a squat or a lunge. And I'm also in a split stance as far as one hip is flexed, one hip is a little bit more extended. Right? This relates to perhaps a lunge or a walk or a run. And the main point would be this, watch this progression. I'm here, I step through, head is over foot, now I'm in more of a lunge, I lift, I'm in a lunge stance, I stand, I'm in the top of a lunge stance or a walk or a run, I step, that's my run. So all I'm doing is just reversing these positions. So you can see that how I was just resting immediately reinforces a good lunge, a good squat, a good deadlift, a good upper body pressing position as far as with my torso goes, and a good walk and a good run. I think I said those already. But the point is they reinforce good movement patterns. Now let's talk about, well, what do I do with my shoulders as it relates to preventing lower back pain, right? Because if I am in these positions accumulating time, then that means when I go into the gym, I'm still gonna do my warm up that my coach is gonna have me do, or if I'm training by myself, I'm still gonna do my warm up but my body's gonna be significantly more ready as far as the joint and the fascial lines and the tissue and the muscles, they're gonna be more prepped immediately. I'm not going to have to spend 15 minutes doing a warm up on a problem area. I'm just gonna be able to immediately get into really feeling my body and getting my blood flowing because the tissue is already prepped. So instead of having 60 minutes, or excuse me, instead of having six to eight hours sitting in a chair and then trying to go squat and warm up my back, I've now spent my entire day prepping my knee, prepping my hip, prepping my spine, prepping my abdomen and all the muscles that are running through it to then do a really good squat or a really good deadlift or a run or a thruster or a jump rope or whatever it is to prevent that lower back pain, okay? So the point is, again, let's recap for some of the people that are just joining and please, if you have any questions, comment below. The point is this, we got barefoot to gain better awareness of what's up the chain and we know that barefoot isn't just a magic pill, you still have to put in the work but now I'm aware of what's firing and what's happening from foot to hip and into pelvis, which is gonna impact my lower back discomfort, okay? And this is outside of the gym stuff and inside of the gym because you can train barefoot. The next thing we talked about is how you're standing and how you're walking. We talked about it has to be head over foot, head over foot. That's how we might have to lunge, that's how we might have to go, and that's to say, when we learn how to control twisting and balance, we get better at resisting twisting and balance, okay? That's why a dead bug is not going to be very good. That's why an exercise like a glute bridge is not going to be very good unless we're asking ourselves that question of what do I actually feel while I'm doing the movement? If I'm doing a deadlift and it looks perfect, it does not matter if I feel my lower back in a bad way. If I'm doing a squat and it looks perfect and I'm sitting vertical and my knees are pushed out, but I feel my knee and I feel my lower back, it does not matter that it looks perfect. 
What matters is what you feel while you're moving. And that always has to be our baseline layer as we try and move pain-free. In this case, as we try and prevent lower back discomfort. Then after we talked about the shoe and we talked about head over foot, we talked about our resting positions. Our rest has to reinforce good movement. If I'm sitting in a chair or standing, again, take a note in your position that you're in right now. You might be driving. I mean, I hope you're not because this is on Instagram Live. You're probably sitting down. You're watching TV maybe. You're on a lunch break. You're standing. Are your feet pointed in if you're standing? Or are you slouched out and kind of head is backwards or head is forward on our phone? And if you're sitting down, are you sitting tall, pelvis over or just in front of hip? Or sorry, head just in front of hip. And are your feet slightly pointed in? This is not reinforcing good movement of any kind. Neither is this. But if I'm standing in or I'm in those resting positions that I mentioned, this is reinforcing good movement. And this is going to accumulate hours and hours and hours of beneficial time moving around. You can also spend time laying on your stomach, laying on your back, pulling your knees into your chest as if you were doing like a uh, happy baby pose, moving the hips around in those different positions. Maybe you're just sitting in a straddle like you might see uh, you know, someone teaching you how to stretch in. But if I'm sitting at home like this and I'm eating, holy shit, do I feel my hip flexors. I feel my hamstring stretching. I feel my quads in different ways. I also start to notice imbalances between left hip and right hip. And the point is, every time I'm resting is an opportunity to reinforce good movement and learn about my movement. And that's going to be extremely important if we want to prevent lower back pain. So if you were to say, Mitch, I got lower back pain. I get it. I'm going to Start moving around barefoot, knowing that it's not a magic pill, but it's going to give me more body awareness, which is the main point of all of this. I know that I should start doing head over foot stuff, and I know that I should be changing my resting positions. What, what else can I do? What can I do today to make a difference for my lower back pain? You can focus on your breathing, doing a 360 breath, and get on the ground when you get home. Don't think about in the gym stuff right now. I'm going to send specific videos that you guys are going to be able to do for that. But when you're at home... Don't sit in the chair or on the couch when you go to eat your food, when you go to watch TV, lay on the floor. And as you lay on the floor in those positions that I mentioned, right, those resting postures, again, just to give a couple, it can be just like resting in the bottom of a squat. It can be resting on your shins. It can be sitting cross-legged. It could be with one shin up. Spend time resting in those positions and focus on breathing into your lower abdomen. This is why breath is so important. Shout out to Coach Keith Camp. I think he's in the, in the feed here. Um, amazing breathwork practitioner. But if I can control breathing into my lower abdomen and breathing horizontally as I go through, the exercise we tried earlier, again, try this if you guys, if you want, take two fingers, push in on the sides of your abdomen and brace like a soda can pushing out, right? That's going to make a huge difference in stabilizing your spine. So when we take, you're breathing well, you're pushing out like a soda can, and your head is being stacked over your foot as you walk, as you lunge, and you use rotation training as a way to learn to control it, to then resist it later, you're going to have a better benefit to reducing lower back pain that you might have, okay? This is to say you can still do foam rolling, you still might need to do uh, like myofascial work from a practitioner, you still might need to make your deadlift technique look better or your squat technique look better. But if you want to move better long term, you have to put in the work. And I believe that the foundation of that work is being aware of that mind-body connection and asking yourself, what do I actually feel while I'm moving in the gym? And how am I resting and what do I feel as I walk and as I stand and as I sit outside of the gym? And barefoot is just a way to like supercharge that ability to improve your body awareness because we're so disconnected. It'd be the same thing as if you had to work with your hands but you wore mittens all the time. And then you were like, why can't I move my fingers well? And then like all of a sudden you freed your hand and started gripping stuff. You'd be like, holy shit, this feels insane. Same exact thing with your feet. So to kind of wrap it up, how far are we in here? We are, I don't know, a certain amount of time. Anyway, to wrap it up, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you guys and I'll like post um, links to my Instagram story. And this video will be saved and I'll post it somewhere. But I'm going to post some of my personal favorite exercises that help people gain body awareness of what is actually firing in my body when I try and do stuff that might impact lower back pain. Uh, so I'll share links to those and I'll share tips that you should be trying to do as far as preventing lower back pain, what you can do inside the gym and outside the gym because that's our two categories. What can we do inside the gym? Specific exercises. What can we do outside the gym? Barefoot, fixing how we stand, fixing how we walk. Um, 
And then again, please ask questions if you guys have any, but I'll share links for those. Um, I, I'm going to have available on Monday a seven-week uh, lower back pain, um, kind of like beginning mind-body connection awareness piece that you guys can uh, sign up for. It's in um, a playbook app that I have, which is like for seven days free. So you guys can go through that full seven-day beginning to fix lower back pain. And remember, the point is pain is just the symptom. We don't just want to think, oh, okay, my pain is gone, so I'm good to go. What was causing the pain was there well before the pain actually surfaced. The pain is just there to say, you, we, gotta, we got shit to fix, right? But it's going to take you months to years to fix the root cause of the problem, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be in pain that whole time, right? Like when I've worked with people that had lower back pain, maybe the first few months it took to really resolve it to where they weren't feeling it at all, but there was still plenty of work to do to fix the imbalances so that it didn't return, and that's what we want. I want you guys to be able to do what you love pain-free long-term. Today we're talking about lower back pain. In the future, I'll cover other areas of the body that you guys specifically want to know about. But I think today with lower back, it was a good intro to say, we're getting barefoot, our head is over our foot, we're learning how to control rotation and balance. Check out WEC method if you want to learn more on that. We're learning how to control rotation and balance. And then we're changing how we rest, we're changing how we stand, and we're changing how we sit and we're changing our resting positions, okay? I'm not saying you have to get rid of all your shoes. I'm not saying that you have to get rid of all of your furniture. It's just simply making these small changes so that way you have a movement-based lifestyle. What we don't want to be is a sedentary exerciser. That's someone that works out. That's great. 60 to 90 minutes, five to seven days a week, but the rest of their time is spent just standing or just sitting or just laying down. We don't want to have that because if you're a sedentary exerciser, you're significantly more likely to get injured, and that's not what we want. And so... If you guys have questions, please do. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate you, brother. Um, if you guys have questions, go ahead and comment below. I'll kind of give it a second for you guys to type in anything you want. Is there anything specific that you'd like me to cover more of before I drop off the Instagram Live and start sharing just some of the links on the, uh, on the story for you guys? I'll kind of give you like 60 seconds or so to type in any questions that you have as related to maybe your specific back pain, barefoot shoe questions, head over foot, what the hell is that? Um, yeah, so I don't know how many of y'all are watching this. Say five, six, four. Uh, any questions or anything? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, thanks so much for joining today, guys, on the Instagram Live. I'm going to try and do this live every Tuesday or every other Tuesday. Um, sneak peek, the next one that I will talk about is breathing properly while we're training. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, breathing properly while we're training. Appreciate you guys. Um, so if you have an airwave, you might want to rethink what's going on. We're going to talk about proper breathing when you train, why essentially an airwave or any mouthpiece that claims to improve your breathing is total bullshit. We've got some more people joining. Maybe I'll say some extra things. Um, so for those of you that are just joining, talked a whole bunch of stuff. This is going to be on my YouTube channel. This will be on uh, – I'm going to share some helpful links in my story as well that you guys can reference for actual how to move pain-free. Um, and we'll kind of cover those things, but I'm going to go live every Tuesday or every other Tuesday. The next topic I'm talking about is breathing properly while you're training, CrossFit uh, specific, but it can be applied to yoga, jiu-jitsu, whatever it is that you like to do, high-intensity training. And the point that I'm also going to reference during that is um, how to improve the breath, how to make sure that you're improving your conditioning as you're doing that, but also why airwaves are total bullshit. I read through some of their studies this morning. They do not directly correlate to the claims that they suggested, so it's total nonsense in that case. Um, some of the people that I really admire in the fitness industry that have done a lot of their own self-exploration -explo around movement, breathing, and jaw position and strength for better movement, along with some people that actually do work with peer-reviewed researchers around nasal breathing and how that impacts training, essentially... The airwave is a sleep apnea mouthpiece that they slapped on. It's for performance. Um, and their data is actually inconclusive. And one of the studies that I read on their website, literally in the conclusion, it said that they had to do more research. The studies that they assessed were inconclusive because they had different tests. And when they're talking about it increases your strength, the strength test that one study had was simply an isolated delt raise. Like, how does that actually apply? And then when they looked at the deadlift and the squat, there was no difference in strength between mouthpiece and non-mouthpiece. So we're going to talk a lot about that. We're going to talk about legit ways that you can actually improve your breathing. Uh, the exciting thing is it's not going to cost you like $50 for a mouthpiece. It's just simply putting in the work and learning how to breathe correctly. So you guys will be able to do that. But for those of you that just kind of joined in because we had a group just jump in, 
I'll, I'll reshare this live. But the whole point was we got to get barefoot to improve our body awareness. Barefoot is not a magic fix for you guys to be able to fix your lower back pain. It just simply gives you more awareness of what's happening. Okay. Uh, there's things that we can do inside the gym and outside the gym. Inside the gym is exercises and always asking ourselves, what do I feel when I'm moving? Do I feel the right thing? Right? The example was, well, if I deadlift and I feel my lower back in a bad way, it doesn't matter if my technique looks great. Something's not going on that should be going on. Um, so that was that. And then for outside of the gym stuff, it was spending time resting on the floor in natural resting positions uh, and making sure that we accumulate better time standing correctly with our feet slightly pointed in, standing tall where our pelvis is stacked over our hips, not behind our hips or not jutted forward while resting at a screen. So I'm so glad that you guys were able to join today. Again, if you're just jumping in, no worries. I'm posting the Instagram live to my feed. I'm going to post it on my YouTube channel. I'll put up links in the story. I'm going to give some of my favorite specific exercises that I've had people be extremely successful with to help with their lower back pain. But again, it's inside the gym and outside the gym. If we only do one, we're not going to be successful with resolving lower back pain. Um, and then again, I mentioned on Monday, I'll have available that seven-day lower back pain body awareness course for you guys to run through, which is just a little bit more of a structured way to kind of like kickstart you into adopting this movement-based lifestyle as it relates to specifically lower back pain. But I'll have some more prompts. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. If there's another body part that you want me to cover, today was kind of lower back and general overall approach to having a movement-based lifestyle. So if it's like elbow, knee, neck, like foot, ankle, whatever it is, please do let me know. Comment, send me a DM. Um, that'll be what I talk about. Again, I'll go live every Tuesday or every other Tuesday. Next conversation that I'll have is going to be around breathing correctly while you're training um, and why... Don't waste money on Airwave. It's nonsense. And uh, you just got to put in the work to learn how to breathe properly through your nose, which affects bracing. But peace out, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. Again, I'll be doing this every Tuesday or every other Tuesday. All right. Let's see. I can turn this damn thing off. Bear with me here. Boop. Are you sure you want to end?